please open your Bibles to the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, Acts chapter 17. In your Schofield Reference Bible, that would be page 1173. Page 1173, we'll read verses 22 through 27. We'll read the verses responsibly, Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 27. And as it is our custom to do, may we all stand, please, for the reading of God's word. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made us of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And that 27th verse is the text verse. And shall we pray? Father, thank you for this good day. Thank you for the good crowd and for these dear people who have come from many places, some over many miles. We pray for thy closeness and blessing and help during the service. And may we be yielded to thy spirit as listeners to thy word. And our pastor, bless him as he himself yields to thy spirit in order that he might bring us thy word. Bless in this hour in a special, wonderful way. In Jesus' name, amen. I was thinking this week so many things. I tried to relive the year as best I could and thank God for his goodness and for his mercy and for his many blessings in my own life in so many ways. I thanked him for the sunshine and I thanked him for the clouds. I thanked him for the victories, and I thanked him for the defeats. I thanked him for the laughter, and I thanked him for the tears. I thanked him for burdens lifted, and I thanked him for burdens granted. But one thing that I dwelt on a great deal this week is this. I'm grateful to God that as a preacher, it doesn't take startling subjects to get me worked up. I mean, boy, you just mentioned God's mercy and I'm about to take off. I mean, I, I sort of feel sorry for preachers if, unless they're preaching on who the Antichrist is or what year Jesus is coming again or the evils of communism. They can't get excited. But you just let a little child stand up and sing Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I'm to untie my shoes and I'll take off. I, I, I thank God. I, I really do. I just thank God that, that the mercies of God excite me and the goodness of God. And as this, our brother sang a while ago, oh, what love. Oh, what love. And uh, this morning, I'm going to delve deeper than profundity all the way to simplicity and talk to you about what I think is the greatest thing that's happened to you this year as a child of God. I love that little line where the Colston read with us a while ago. It said, He is not far from every one of us. I know what you do. I can see you grinning. Several of you. I know what you do. You, 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 when you read the scripture, you try to find the, the text, don't you? I mean, do I do that now? You, you look for the text, and, and uh, I saw a few of you that guessed it this morning. Uh, but um, uh, what a scripture. He is not far from every 
one of us. I want to speak this morning on that subject. God is not far from every one of us. Our Heavenly Father. What a, what a text. What a scripture. What a God. I pray this morning you'd help us to rejoice, not only in thy person, not only in thy existence, but in thy nearness. Amen. Now, you may as well listen this morning. We're here. We're stuck. Your wife made you come. And you can't leave, and I'm not going to leave because I need the money. So, you may as well just go ahead and say, well, who knows, this may be the day when he preaches a good one. And uh, so, just, you're here, we're not going to leave for 30 minutes. I'm not going to sit down or finish preaching for 30 minutes anyway, or so. And uh, so, you just may as well hear what the old man has to say. What a comfort. God is not far from every one of us. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paul was not standing in a pulpit preaching to a group of believers saying, God is not far from every one of us. He's not reminding believers in a church of the nearness of God. When Paul said these words as inspired by the Holy Spirit, He's not standing in a Bible college classroom reminding young ministerial aspirants that, that God is not far from every one of them. This is no father standing up in a Christian home reminding his family that God is not far from every one of us. The surprising thing is to whom the Apostle Paul is speaking. He is speaking, are you listening? He is speaking to the learned philosophers of Athens. He is speaking to a group of men who spend their lives searching for God. They go to the biggest libraries in the land and read the most uh, prolific authors in the world trying to find God. They read from the most spiritual scholars. No height was too high to soar. No depth was too deep to plunge. They spent their lives seeking God. And they stand in, on that little hill outside the city, of, in the city of Athens, just looking up to the Parthenon. And Paul stands up, a little Baptist preacher stands up and tells these learned scholars who spend their life trying to find God, trying to seek God, trying to look, look at God. And Paul says, the truth is, God is not far from every one of us. He's following you as you search for him. Quit searching and start talking. God is not far from every one of us. God is not far from every harlot in a red light district. God is not far from every drunkard on skid row. God is not far from every convicted embezzler in the penitentiary. God is not far. We sing, and I love the song, but we sing it erroneously. I've wandered far away from God. Eat your hearts out, choir. Lamb, coming home. And we sing it. But the truth is, you haven't wandered far away from God. God is not far from every one of us. We say, He sure has got drifted a long ways from God. No, He hasn't. No, He hasn't. God is not far. From every one of us. You say, but for the house, I feel so alone in the world. Well, that's your, that's your fault. That's not God's fault. That's your fault. Because God is not far from every one of us. Oh, you say that my, my, uh, my son or my daughter or my husband or my wife or my friend is so far from God. Oh, no, 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 no. God is not far from every one of us. You know, we, we, we have little cliches and little statements we make so often. They're not true. I've said this, so have you. At Christmas time, we say, God came to earth. No, he didn't. Christ was not a God coming out of absence. 
He was the ever-present God revealing how near He always was. That's what Christmas is. Christmas is not God coming to earth in the form of man. How many times have we said that? God came to earth. Well, God was already here. And this is no God coming out of absence. It is the ever-present God revealing how near to us He always was. He is not God coming to earth, but Jesus was God revealing His nearness to us in a way that we could see that which we had not seen before, but it was already near us. You know what he says, every one of us, God is not far from every one of us. God is not far from you this morning. You say, Brother Hiles, I've done some things I shouldn't have done, but God is not far from every one of us. But you say, Preacher, you understand, my life is such a, such a, a, a terrible mess and disarray. I've drifted so far from God. Oh, no, you haven't drifted far from God because God walked with you everywhere you went. Bible says God is, and that's what Emmanuel means, God with us. Don't laugh because somebody else says amen, join him. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm saying God is, Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. The drunkard in the gutter this morning, God is not far from him. And the atheist who, dis, who says there is no God, if you turn the lights on, he'd see him right then. God is not far from every one of us. Doesn't matter how deep you go. But how tragic it is in life to go through life with him right there and you don't recognize his presence. I was thinking this, uh, this week, several times this week, I've thought how men uh, seek that which is near all the time. Men this morning all over the world seeking peace and happiness. Oh, book after book written, 15 ways to find peace, 75 ways to find happiness. Oh, then those books, they, they'd start a good fire. They'd make good paper to burn with so you get wood, get wood on fire. Uh, uh, listen, I'll, you, you, oh, how can I find peace? And the dozens of you searching this morning, trying to find peace, looking and looking and looking. It's right there. It's right there. It's there all the time. Men seek peace and happiness only to find contentment is the answer. That's it. Contentment is the answer. Content with what I have. Content with what I am. I'm 5'11 and 3 quarters, and I'm glad I'm 5'11 and 3 quarters. I weigh 100 and some odd pounds, and uh, let me tell you what I weighed before Christmas. But I'm glad I weigh 100 and some odd pounds. I mean, I'm glad for who I am. And I'm glad for what I have. And I'm content with God's provisions for me. Thank God I, I, I don't have to search. And, and yet search and look and search and look. He's right there. Peace is right there. Contentment is right there. Turn the light on. Quit looking for God and start talking to God. There He is right there beside you right now. He's there. Oh, you say, Brother house, I'm going to find my way back to God. He's going to follow you all the way while you're trying to find Him. He'll help you find himself. You just stop and talk instead of looking. I was thanking God this week for a simple taste. I thank God I'd rather have a Big Mac than a T-bone steak. Let me think that one through just a minute, please. But, I mean, look, you don't have to be searching for the biggest steak in town. McDonald's is right there by you. He is close to, it's close to every one of us. McDonald's is not far from every one of us. I'm saying, uh, I mean, you don't have to search. Here it is. Right here, man seeks to know his fellow man. And, uh, and boy, we, we learn. How can we learn more about man? And you hear these screwballs and nuts and see them on television talk shows all the time. Dr. Messing up or Dr. Big Bottom is trying to, he, he's searching for this. And he, he has his degree from Harvard. Bunch of screwballs up there in Harvard. And he's the head screwball of all the screwballs in Harvard. And he comes to tell us about man. I'll tell you how you can learn about man. Get with him and sympathize with him. That's the way you learn about man. I recall in East Texas Baptist College Library, I, I, I'd search and search and search to know more about man. I've got to reach people. I've got to know more. I did. I'll tell you where I found out about man, about where I was. The little fellow down the, down the road that was sick. This morning, one of our dear members walked up to me. One of the finest men in this church was here when I came. And he said, I've got to, I've got to tell you something. His lip began to quiver. Uh, he's one of my, my buddies. We're always cutting up with each other. He, you know, he, he'll call me fatty, and I'll call him blubbery. And uh, he walked in this morning, but there was no cutting up. 
uh, there was a quivering lip, and his little daughter, one of our girls, I can recall when she was a little girl in the church here. And oh, her smile was always the prettiest smile. And ever she'd come by the office when she was a little girl back that high, and she'd jump up in my arms. And, and uh, now she's married and has her own family. And this good man walked in this morning my office as I was walking to Sunday school. He said, I've got to tell my preacher something. I said, what is it? He said, they just discovered this week that my daughter has multiple sclerosis. And I said, I heard about it this week. And I said, my heart broke. He said, you think your heart broke? I'll tell you how you can find out about man. You don't have to read some psychologist from Pillsbury State or Blueberry State. I shouldn't have said Pillsbury. There's a Christian college called that. But uh, you haven't got to go to the Ivy League or the Fern League. Uh, uh, you haven't got to go to uh, Princeton or Dartmouth or uh, a psychologist. Get out here where people's hearts are broken and heavy. And feed the hungry and clothe the naked and encourage the discouraged and lift up the fallen and walk among men. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Uh, peace is right where you are. You have to search for it. Here are these learned scholars trying to find God and reading every book they could find about God and hearing every lecture they could find and hear about God and searching to the heights about God and studying theology about God and trying to find God. And Paul said, God is not far from every one of us. And the best thing about 1985 is that God has not left me all year long, nor will God leave you in 1986. He is not far from every one of us. Man seeks friends. He reads about how to make friends, influence people. Mr. Carnegie, God bless him. I'm not against his book, but he wasted his time. Um, how to win, make, how, how to uh, win friends and influence people. First place, there's no way to win friends. Friends are a gift of God, just like salvation is. Uh, maybe you ought to write a book on how to be a friend. I remember when I was a little boy. You don't believe this every time I tell it, but, but it's true. By nature, I'm sort of shy. In the pulpit, I'm a screwball and a nut. Because I run with screwballs and nuts who are nearby. But, but I something snaps and I walk in the pulpit. But by nature, in, I, I'm sort of shy. I'm sort of a loner. When I'm on the airplane, I don't get on the airplane and say, Good morning, neighbor! How are you? I wave at him. I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not a real outgoing person in public. And um, <laughs> I was telling our daughters, uh, uh, my daughters gave me a gift certificate to take me out to eat. And it didn't work out that way. Uh, ended up me paying for I don't know how I get messes like that. <laughs> but but uh, they took me out to eat. I can't afford them, them to take me out to eat very often, but, <laughs> but uh, they took me out to eat. And, and the funny thing, there must have been no more than 20 people standing around there. We'd given our names to the, to the, the hostess there. And there couldn't have been more than 20 people there waiting. And I said to them, I said, I, I dread them calling my name. It always embarrasses me. I don't want anybody to think my name's Hiles. That's him, you know, that, that's him. And I said, I'd, and I'm that way. I, uh, I, I, I'm not the kind of fellow that every time I go to the airport, have myself paged. I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I know fellas like that. I got, I got a preacher friend. Go to the airport and call this and say, would you page Dr. So-and-so, please? And, uh, and they'll page him. Uh, I'm not built that way. And when I was a little boy, I, I, now don't, 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 don't take up on this. I'm trying to be serious now. It's impossible. But, I'm not, but I, uh, when I was a little boy, I didn't think anybody like me. And uh, I wanted to have friends. I was poor, and I was little, and I was an introvert, and I wanted to have friends. And to be quite frank with you, a little teeny bit of that lingers to this day. I, I don't have an inferiority complex. I'm inferior. That's no problem. But, but I don't have an inferiority complex. But I, uh, one day, one of the greatest things in my life, I searched for friends. I tried to find friends and tried to figure out how to make folks like me. And one day I said, that's I don't worry about that anymore. I'm going to try to be a friend. I'm just going to be a friend. I'm, I'm not going to worry about that anymore. 
And God knows that's true. I've tried to be a friend to my friends. And this morning, I have people that love me all over this nation. I have folks that love me all over this room, but I have folks all over this nation that love me. Birthday comes. Usually I'll get 3,000 cards from all over the world. And hundreds and thousands of people will say, you're my pastor. I, uh, I'm a preacher, but you're my pastor. And folks all over the world, thank God, love me. I never tried. I quit trying. I just decided to be a friend. <laughs> and I found that I had friends right beside me all the time. It's a wonderful thing to realize that in life, the, the little thing, the simple things, the paper boy throwing the paper on the porch, some fresh popcorn, the kiss, slobbery kiss, oh baby, the I love you, Papa, of a grandchild, the I love you of a son or a daughter. Some of the greatest moments in my life have been her mother and I lived in a little shack of a place together and had nothing in the world. And Mom would make fudge, <laughs> and I love to scrape the pan. It's, I love to scrape the pan on cookies. And my sister, that's where we learned to hate each other. Uh, we'd fight over who'd scrape the pan. And I used to wonder why, and this, there's nothing in the world better than tea cookie dough. They still make tea cakes? Tea cookies? Just as little plain cookies, little plain vanilla cookies. And that dough, it's a shame to take such good tasting dough and make cookies out of it. It's, it's tragic. It, it, it's, it's awful. But you know, so many things. The other day, it's Christmas Day, and uh, my sons-in-law and my daughters were playing dominoes. I hadn't played dominoes in years. Since, well, it's been 50 years, 51 years, 40, I'm sorry, 41 years uh, since I played dominoes. And anybody here have to play 42? They're playing 42. It's a Texas game called 42. And I... Uh, I sat down and I said, I've forgotten the game. But of course, I won six out of seven out of eight. And the eighth one, I gave it away. I didn't want to feel bad. And then played dominoes. And I, I won't brag about it, but I beat Scott two out of two. And, uh, but um, he that tooteth not his own horn, his horn shall never be tooted. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. But as I got in the car, drive back up to the church to get ready for the service Wednesday night, I thought how happy we were in our little poor shack of a house. Mom and I used to play dominoes with an hour. And 42, we'd play 42. And we'd play checkers. And then we'd shoot dice. I, I, I mean, then we'd uh, uh, shoot craps. I'm sorry. But then uh, and, uh, we'd, uh, we'd play pick-up sticks. And then we'd play Chinese checkers. We didn't have to have a computer for every kid in the house. Didn't take that. Oh, if I could just this morning reach out and put my arms around you and say, Oh, beloved people, God is very near to every one of us. And happiness is very near to every one of us. You don't have to go looking for it. It's right there. Turn the light on. I mean, you, 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 you're rubbing happiness and, and, and trying to find it. You're rubbing it. Turn the light on. It's there. And the Apostle Paul says, Hey, you learned people trying to grope for God and grope for peace and grope for joy. Why he said, God is near to every one of us. Quit your looking and start your talking. He's right there with you where you are. It was a wonderful day for me when I realized that God was there. His wisdom is right there. I, I, spent, I spent several years in college trying to figure out how to be wise. <laughs> it dawned on me. Wisdom itself was living inside of me. I think I've told this here, and this is one of the things you, that you wouldn't believe. And if you told me this, I wouldn't believe you were telling the truth either. If you don't believe what I say right now, I won't be upset with you because it's, it's almost unbelievable. But I was pastor of my first little church, and I, I had book after book that I'd read in college on how to be wise and how to find wisdom and so forth. I had a little secretary named Eva Smoke. 
and uh, she didn't, but that was her name. And, and uh, she worked four hours a week, half a day, every week. And right across the street in the church was an old lady in her 80s named Mrs. Waldrop, one of the sweetest old ladies I ever met. Mrs. Wal- I, I made a little improvised office in the corner of the, of the auditorium. And one day Eva came and said, Brother Howes, Mrs. Waldrop, Waldrop has come over to get some counsel. I didn't know what counsel was. I did not know what counsel was. I did not know. And I said, well, where do we keep it, Eva? And God bless Eva. She was such a good woman. She said, Pastor, she wants some counsel. Well, I said, find it for her and let her have all she wants. And Eva said, Brother Howes, I think she also wants some advice. Well, I said, okay, as soon as you get the counsel for her, bring her by, and I'll give her some advice. And while Mrs. Walter was going to get a bucket full of counsel, Eva, Eva actually let me think she was going to get some. And she came back about ten minutes later to Ms. Walter to get the count, to get the advice after she had gotten a pound of counsel. And uh, I didn't know. I was just a country preacher. I was reared as, as a poor kid, a little boy, an introvert. And uh, Ms. Walter came in. But while in the ten minutes, I said, oh, God. I don't know what to tell that old lady. I'm 21. She's 88. She's forgotten more than I know. Now that I'm 60 almost, I've forgotten more than I used to know too. And I, I, I won't tell her. And she came in. And she said, Pastor, I need some advice. And I said, what is it? And I, I was shaking like that. And she said, this is it. And I started talking to her. And I told her things. And I said to myself, I didn't know I was this smart. I didn't know. I found out that wisdom is not in the library. Wisdom is not is close to me all the time. Not very far away is wisdom. It was a wonderful day when I found His mighty power is available. It's close. It was a wonderful day when I found out that His comfort is close. I haven't got it. Oh, God, comfort me. No, oh, He's here right now. He's comforting me right now. And it's so close and He's so near and so close. And this morning... May I say it's a great comfort in soul winning to know this too. A great comfort to know. Everybody you talk to soul winners, they may seem hard, but he is not far from every one of them. Somebody asked me last week, and I'd forgotten it. I, I, I hadn't told this in a long time. I, and thing, I may have never told it from this pulpit in a public service. Somebody said, Brother Hiles, what's the toughest, what's the most amazing, most amazing, miraculous, difficult person you ever saw that got saved? I said, that's easy. One Thursday or Friday night, I was sitting in my office. You won't believe this either. In fact, I'm not sure it really happened. I'm afraid. I'm lying myself. I was sitting in my office. It was back in the days when I, you came to my office and took a number, and I'd take you by number. didn't have appointments. You came by the office, I'd take a number. The lady walked in the office. She sat down on the sofa there. I sat across from her. And she said, Reverend Hiles, I want to tell you a story. And I said, what is it? And she said, and she told me the most amazing story. I said, what is it? She said, I, when I was a little girl, I didn't like being a girl. She said, I always played boys' games. And I always wanted to be a boy. And I said, well, that, we had a little tomboy girls in Texas where I grew up too. But that isn't all she said. She said, when I became a teenager, I became attracted to girls instead of boys. She said, I mean sexually, physically, passionately attracted to girls instead of boys. I thought, oh, brother, oh, boy, it's going to be rough. But I didn't know how rough. She said, brother, brother how she said, uh, I decided to have a sex change operation. And she said, I had a sex change operation. And she says, I had another, and another, and another. She said, by the time I had the last sex change operation, I was already in business. She said, I run a business. And if I call the name of that business, and I'll not do it, but she said, if I, but if, I'll say this, if I call the name of that business in Hammond, you'd know the business. Every one of you drive by it nearly every week. She said, I own that business. I run that business. But she said, you see me as a woman. But she said, I've had several sex change operations. And now I'm a man. Well, 
there it sat in a skirt, long hair. And then she said, I run my business as a woman, but I live over in Lansing, Illinois, and I'm married as a man to a woman. But she said, I'm already in business as a woman, so the folks where I work think I'm a woman. She said, and at home, I'm married. I got a wife. And I'm married to a woman. And I said, ma'am, I mean, sir, I mean, Sam, <laughs> or Murr, uh, <laughs> it's Christmas time, bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But uh, I said, let me get this straight now. You, you were a little girl, and you liked uh, little girls, and you became a teenager, and you were attracted to teenage girls, and you had several sex. She said, that's right. She said, every night, all the way home from work, I change clothes in the car going home. My wife does not know I'm a woman by day. And my, pe- my employees do not know I'm a man by night. Try that one over size, Buster. And uh, then she said, I can't change. I don't want to do. I'm registered with income tax as a woman with the government. For the same government, I'm registered as a husband with a, a marriage license as a man. And then she asked me this question. She said, does God love me? Does God love me? And I said, <laughs> dear lady, I think, sir, Mur, Sam, I said, Oh, yes, God loves you. He loves you. You know, she said, well, how can I get out of this tangle? Like a beast that had wrapped up himself in a tangled net of some kind and trying to get out, uh, made himself more gnarled in the net. And she said, does God love me? Oh, yes, I said, God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus loves me, this I know. And uh, we knelt and prayed. And I think she sincerely received Christ as her Savior. I, she said, could I see you again? No, I didn't say, what should I, what should I do now? <laughs> I, said, I don't know. I said, could I think about it and pray about it? Would you come see me again? We had set another appointment. About a week later, she came back. Except she came at night. And she was a he. Hair looked short, and voice lower. Hello, Brother Hiles. I said, uh, um, "Hello," and then I said to, her, to him, "Her hit Sam Murr." I said, "You got to pardon me a minute. I got to get out of here." <laughs> I, I'm about to crack up. I said, I don't mean to be unkind, but I'm about to crack up. I, 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 I am. I really am. And so uh, it sat in the waiting room, and I went out in the alley. I took a walk. I had to. And then I got thinking how good God is. He loves it. He loves it. He loves her. He loves him. <laughs> I walked back in and I tried to take that life and untangle it. What do you do? And I tried to untangle it. And uh, I had several appointments with that person before Tony, that was her nighttime name, before Tony left. He said, it said, she said, they said, these words. Went to the, got to the door, and Tony said, Reverend, I don't know how I ever got here, but she said, I'm glad God loves me. And I said, He does. Though your sins be as scarlet, 
They shall be as white as snow, though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And she said, I feel like God is right here now. And I close this year by saying this. This year morning sermons. This 53rd Sunday morning sermon this year. 53 Sundays. I think that's right. And I thank God I've been able to preach every one of them. 21 years since I've missed an engagement preaching. 21 years since I was too sick to go to church to preach. I'm talking about all my engagements all over the nation. 21 years. May I say, leave this with you. We have a wonderful God. I mean this. With all my heart, I mean this. I love Him. I love Him. And I wish you'd take advantage of His presence. He's right there. Dear unsaved person, God is not far from every one of us. Lonely heart, you don't have to be lonely. God is not far from every one of us. But you say, I'm so far from God. You just think you're far from God. God is not far from every one of us. Last night, I woke up a lot. And sleep did not come easy for me last night. And I was in a different kind of a mood. But I said this. I said, Dear God, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I thank you that for 365 days this year, you've never left me, never forsaken me. 366 times in this Bible, God tells us He never leaves us. He's with us. 366 times in this Bible, His presence is mentioned. That's one for every day, and God even knows it's a leap year. 366 times. The greatest thing I know this morning about 1985 is that He's never left me or forsaken me. God is not far from every one of us. He loves you this morning. He loves you very much. If you don't talk to him, it's not because he's not there. He's not far from every one of us. If you don't feel close to him, that's your fault. It's not his. He is not far from every one of us. If you're not right with him, it's not you, not God's fault. It's yours. He is not far from every one of us. I wish this morning, sometimes I want to grab you and shake you and say, why don't you listen to me? But listen to Kevin. I wish this morning I could somehow implant in the hearts and minds of my people that there's a God in heaven and He's real and He's personal and I wish I could somehow lead you to get to know Him. I wish you knew Him. God is not far from every one of us. Praise His name. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is not far from every one of us. Our Heavenly Father.